a tingling, prickling, numbness, warmth or cold sensation that appears in hands, in legs, in feet, also in other parts of the body. Indeed, without any apparent prior stimulus. Have you ever experienced this? When did it occur? What feelings have you had? Have you considered it important? Didn't you consider it important? Comment below. This feeling you've had is called paresthesia and it's quite common, but it can also be behind many health problems that affect the nervous system. Today I'll explain why it happens and how paresthesia is manifest. You'll see that it's more common than you think and you've probably had paresthesias without realizing it or without knowing what they were. Firstly, I want you to know that we've all had a paresthesias at some point, like when you fall asleep on an arm or when you're sitting and cross your legs and one falls asleep. This is due to the mechanical pressure generated on the superficial peripheral nerves by these forced postures when you fall asleep in a strange position. In short, we've all had this type of paresthesia. However, when these sensations persist over time without an apparent cause, there may be a medical condition behind it, and some are very important. What diseases or problems are we talking about? Well, there are many causes behind paresthesias or dysesthesias, which is perhaps a broader term. But most causes are usually related to a direct or indirect affectation of the peripheral nervous system. That is, the nerves that are responsible for collecting the sensitivity of your skin, which when damaged in some way send incorrect information to the central nervous system, to your brain, which interprets these sensations abnormally and is what produces those symptoms. As I was saying, dysesthesia is a broader term that also includes sensations of burning, electric shock, pressure sensations, in addition to the aforementioned tingling, numbness, which are usually the most frequent. And now we're going to look at several of the most common causes of paresthesias. The first one, diabetes, super important. We saw it in a recent video about diabetic neuropathy. Chronic elevation of blood sugar can damage nerves and often does. It generates an axonal polyneuropathy that alters nerve transmission. This was the leading cause of diabetic foot, Something very relevant that you always have to keep in mind because it can end in an amputation of the limb in poorly controlled diabetic patients and therefore, well, it is extremely important. The nerve damage is due both directly to the effect of chronic hyperglycemia on the nerves themselves and indirectly due to a lesser blood supply to the nerve by blood vessels that are damaged by poorly controlled diabetes. Remember that diabetes greatly deteriorates your cardiovascular system for more information, see the video here. Another cause, compression of the sciatic nerve, often a hernia or disc protrusion. I discuss this nerve as it's a frequent issue, but there are many others we could mention. Often a hernia or a protrusion of the discs that you have between vertebral body and vertebral body, the intervertebral discs at the lumbar level, can catch, can pinch a nerve or a nerve root and cause this intense pain and sensations of electric shock or paresthesias even in the leg on the back side of the leg. This, when it occurs in the sciatic nerve, which is a large nerve that runs through your leg, causes the famous sciatica, which anyone who has suffered from it will know is tremendously debilitating while it lasts. It is usually due to this, to hernias, to disc protrusions, and also to weakness of the core muscles, the abdomen, and the lumbar muscles. That's why it's crucial to work on it. But if it repeats very frequently, or if it does not improve over time throughout the weeks, an imaging test is important to see that there is no other more serious underlying cause. We could also say paresthesias from repetitive movements. Super frequent paresthesias can occur when we repeat the same very specific movement for a long time, usually years. It could be in tennis players hitting the ball with a tennis racket or typing on a keyboard or playing a specific instrument or using the same tool continuously. Think of mechanics or carpenters who always make similar movements daily and also for many hours. And what does this cause? Well, it causes friction, repetitive compression on one or several nerves that cause these sensations. The treatment, of course, is to rest from that repetitive movement. Let's now talk about a very common problem, hypothyroidism. Nowadays, it is not at all common for this to happen because hypothyroidism is usually diagnosed and treated quickly, right? But if we leave it untreated, it is possible that a very significant decrease in thyroid hormones T4 and T3 can cause paresthesias. Yes, it's possible. After all, thyroid hormones are hormones that regulate your entire metabolism. When they are very low, the nerves are also affected. 
There's another situation, another very curious cause that you probably haven't related to paresthesia, and that's hyperventilation. When do we hyperventilate? Well, we usually hyperventilate in situations of extreme anxiety, like panic attacks. We hyperventilate for a long enough time to generate respiratory alkalosis, that is the pH of the blood rises a lot, and this causes those paresthesias in the nervous system, which of course are totally temporary, and when that hyperventilation passes, they decrease or disappear. Vitamin deficiencies such as B12 also exist. Generally, B-group vitamins, particularly B12, are involved in nerve metabolism. When you lack B12, because for example you are vegan and do not supplement, the nerves can be affected and these types of symptoms can occur. That's why supplementation is so important in this population, in the vegan population, since this vitamin is found in animal-derived foods. Multiple sclerosis is also a neurological disease of autoimmune cause in which there is a progressive demyelination of the nerves. What is this demyelination? Myelin, from which the name comes, is like a coating of the nerves, a sheath that covers the nerves and has an essential, very important function. And it is to allow that nerve impulse to be transmitted to the nerves, but to be transmitted at high speed. It significantly boosts the nerve impulse transmission speed. When the myelin is damaged for any reason, in this case by an autoimmune disease, multiple neurological symptoms occur that multiple sclerosis patients know well. One of them are paresthesias and dysesthesias. Let's now talk about carpal tunnel syndrome. Carpal tunnel syndrome is a nerve entrapment syndrome. In this case, it is due to the entrapment in the wrist, usually by repetitive movements, of a nerve called the median nerve. And that generates paresthesias in the fingers that allow you to pinch. And it can become very disabling. It is solved with surgery in most cases. Also, there are other causes, guys. There are many causes of paresthesias and dysesthesias, many more, transverse myelitis, strokes, encephalitis, cancer, human immunodeficiency, virus infection, advanced chronic kidney disease, Lyme disease, and excess of alcohol. But before discussing them, I need to know your interest in this video, in this topic, to explain them thoroughly in another video. Let me know if you're interested in this topic in the comments below. Thanks for your support. See you in the next video. Big hug. Continue empowering.